I got to find someone now. I got to date someone and make sure they're not a freaking psychopath. You know that I was Tom Brady and Leonardo DiCaprio's bottle girl on New Year's Eve? Mm. I worked with type of events as like a cocktail server, an atmosphere model, bartender, stuff like that. I love it. Atmosphere model. Basically, mm. be a fucking smoke show. Oh no. What is your ideal first a nice dinner. I'm a big dinner girly. Just take me to dinner. I also have RBF. Yeah, I believe that. You definitely got a resting bitch face. Six foot or taller. Oh, women will never change. I love it. Women will say, you know what I call men under six foot? Friends. And I've matched these women. I'm six foot two. I've matched these women and I've said, read your bio. Just matched you so I could unmatch you because I think you're a twat. I would never because put that. It's the same as me saying, I'm not dating a girl unless she is big Oh, hello boobs. there. It's the exact same. I would just get cancelled for it because I'm a man. I don't like it. Or you just don't have to match them. Why put it in your bio? Why make, why make someone feel shit about themselves? I like that too. What's the worst date you've been on? Start getting red throat, blotchy all over, and then I start repulsive vomiting in the bathroom. And he still wanted me to go to his house after. <gasps> this is my boy! All right, guys, we are back again with another Foster Unfiltered podcast. I am here with the lovely Kaylin. She is from Miami, or not originally from Miami, are you? Where are you originally based? Grew up in San Diego, but I was born in Rhode Island. So Rhode Island, the state, right? It's a state, yeah. The smallest yeah. state. <laughs> Near New York? Yes. Okay, East Coast. okay. East Coast. And then you moved to Miami, right? How long have you been living in Miami? Four years ago, I moved here during okay. COVID. During COVID, okay. I'm so jealous. The Miami lifestyle looks so nice. It's It's a vibe for sure. Miami is the place to be. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about yourself. And before Kaylin does, just an explainer, I look so red because I was out in the... It's actually nice and sunny in the UK for once. So I was out in the sun and I think I might have got a bit sunburned. Yeah. So I'm not blushing. Uh, let's just get that clear. <laughs> but um, yeah, Kaylin, tell us a little bit more about you as a person. You know, what do you do for work? I obviously have a large uh, following on Instagram. Yeah, so I have a beauty business here in Miami. I do like lashes, permanent makeup all the girly stuff. I'm really into health and fitness. Um, I am an influencer, so I'll do a lot of brand deals and collabs, um, photo shoots and stuff like that. Um, and then I invest my money in trading right now. Oh, nice. Those are my main things. And did mm -hmm. I see on your story, was, uh, was that Jake Paul? We got time. Uh, yeah, that was a photo shoot we just did. He's <laughs> launching a line for men actually like uh okay so he surrounded himself with women um, beautiful yeah. women hmm. <laughs> yeah the point of having the girls there was for the video that we were shooting for his uh, launch okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. very nice does he live in miami or just happen to be no, in miami he, he lives in puerto rico ah uh, with his brother logan all right got it okay cool no, because I know in Miami there's a ton of influencers, a big, a massive influencer scene. It's kind of crazy over there. But that brings me on to like the sort of the first topic I want to touch on is obviously you've got what over a hundred thousand followers on Instagram, right? Yep. Okay. What's the rough number? Hundred twenty-one. Like okay. <laughs> Not too bad. A little bit more than me. Um, how did you grow your Instagram? How did that sort of start? Honestly, with time, it grew. Um, my ex-boyfriend had a pretty big following, so I think from him, it grew a lot. Um, mm. But honestly, lately, it's been a lot of girls. Uh, a lot of girls have just somehow started to follow me, and I like that. We're starting to have a girl gang going on here, so <laughs> I'm going to keep trying to grow that. But yeah, I think just from like the network of people that I was surrounded mm. by, by dating my ex, they all had a big following all his friends okay. so yeah and do you think um did that sort of kick off when you moved to miami or did you have a bit of a following before then mm -mm, definitely when i moved to miami probably four years ago okay okay, okay mm -hmm. i got you it's good that you have a girl following because normally like obviously you're very beautiful normally when like a beautiful woman it's normally like a lot of simpy men sort of speak who are just like following you do you know your split ratio 
Don't get me wrong. I didn't say there was no creepy men because I definitely <laughs> did that. I don't know my split ratio, but um, it's probably a half and half. Definitely. Half and half. Okay, that's not bad. I you got know, I was looking up in there. <laughs> not all the men are creepy, to be fair. Some of them just, you know, they want to follow attractive people. That's fine. Is when they start messaging all weird sort of shit, which we will dive into the creepiest DMs you receive, but we'll get into that in a bit. <laughs> um, so you've been living in Miami for four years. Um, just continuing with sort of the influencer states, what sort of collabs have you done? What's like been some of the coolest collabs you've done? Whilst I pour myself a drink. I think um, one of my favorite ones was definitely probably like the very beachy swim line. A lot of the girls here have that one. Um, Jackson is a good one. Um, I'm sure you've heard of that. A lot of people, it's a jewelry line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pretty popular now. Um, you know, I don't know, just like clothing lines, clothing brands. Okay. And, and then the Jake Paul of... one was pretty cool. Yeah, that's quite cool. Was Did you speak to him much? Like, what's he like? Yeah. Nice guy. Obviously, like he has sort of a reputation from, but I think he plays up to that, right? Yeah. I mean, he definitely didn't want to be in front of the camera. We weren't allowed mm. to have our phones that much to like put them yeah, away. Yeah, I thought that, was a, thought that was a sneaky one you took. I could tell. I was like, I've definitely done that before with someone who I shouldn't be taking a snap of. But, um, okay, so you've been living in Miami for four years. I think. I've always wanted to go over to Miami because I have a I have a thing for Hispanic women. Chupapi muñeño. Now Miami has a big Hispanic culture. I won't lie. Also, Miami just looks like the dream lifestyle, and I spend a lot of time in my bear. I'm actually going out to lit, spend my summer in my bear this summer. Life is good right now. Yes, sir. And a lot of Americans who come over say Miami is sort of like the Marbella of America. So just paint me a picture of like what the Miami lifestyle is like. What's it like over there? Is it full of, you know, beautiful people, rich people? What's the vibe? Health, health and fitness yeah. is big over there, obviously, Muscle Beach. When you walk outside of my building, there is a billion active people walking around, beautiful people. It's always crowded. Um, the weather's pretty nice all the time we do have random mm. rainstorms that come in and out but then it's fine like in five minutes um the ocean's <laughs> right here lots to do endless restaurants everywhere you walk to like there's just something mm. to do always something to do for women what's the best yeah tell us about women, the women like, what yeah i mean being <laughs> like an attractive woman in miami like i could literally just text someone right now and say i have three friends, we want to go to dinner tonight. We wouldn't pay for anything. And usually the dinners turn into like a little dinner party after. Mm. And then like people text us, do you want to go on a yacht this weekend? Like it's like endless, but like there's always something you get invited to here. Damn, I was born the wrong gender. I should have been a girl. <laughs> I know I would have been a pretty girl if I was a girl. Don't know why I say that, but um, no, it's a little bit, sounds a little bit like Dubai in a way, like the lifestyle they got over there sort of just yachts being invited out. I was speaking to someone who I'm going to have on. She's got a big following on Instagram as well. She's English, but she's got her own bikini line living out in Dubai and some of the places she's been taken to and some of the like the parties she's gone to just sound incredible. And I was like, you definitely wouldn't be living that in England. I um, love Dubai. Yeah, definitely it's definitely somewhere. I'm, yeah, somewhere that I'm looking at, I think, um, it, yeah, it looks insane, though. It honestly looks insane. But in terms of, like, Miami as a whole, what's, like, sort of the your favorite parts about Miami? The networking, the people that are here. Um, yeah, I just think, like, the people that I see walking around, like I said, very active, um, high network mm. people where I live because it's very expensive to live here. Um, yeah, so definitely the networking okay and what's what's the negatives of living in miami the party scene is a lot big party scene there's also that everybody's mm. partying here um it's expensive to live um and uh yeah i think that's it i think people don't really settle down here 
dating wise. Well, that's what I was about to move on to. What's the dating scene like in Miami? Is it a lot of fuck boys? Uh, is it a lot of <laughs> having fun? You know what I mean when I say having fun, like lots of one night stands and stuff like that. I'm not saying you're doing that, but is that sort of the vibe or you're not seeing too many couples in Miami settling down, having kids? Not in not in the part yeah. you're living in. So definitely where I'm living, I don't it's definitely active, younger crowd in where I live in Brickle. Um mm. I am a lash artist, so I hear from my girls all their <laughs> stories. I just got out of a relationship, so I haven't been dating. But mm. they tell me how hard it is to date here. The men don't want to have anything serious, like, at all. And here in Miami, it's normalized, which this is about to sound insane, but the guys can date multiple women, and they're, like, allowed to cheat here. And it's very yeah. normalized. I mean, that's weird. Like, do you think that's normalized on a surface, like, on a, not on a surface, on a, yeah, on a surface level, like, even in, like, quote unquote normal people relationships not influence relationships no it's just normalized here like the guys that's, think that that's okay that's so fucked up i don't agree with that do you think it's like i know i reckon it's because you know like fresh and fit are there they mm -hmm. obviously you know my myron he he always talks about having multiple women all of that um mm -hmm. i know a few other youtubers fitness youtubers like austin dunelm uh he's big fitness youtuber but he's sort of gone into that red pill environment he's he's been out in miami he sort of dates lots of different women at the same time and that sort of stuff so i just think yeah it seems a bit like dubai where it's got these men who are just sort of dating multiple women at the same time and it's okay and you just put up with it you get do you think the women put up with it because the men just go right we'll pay for your meal but just be quiet and just let I me was date other say, people the guys with money i think are the ones doing it so yeah mm. the girls are like oh yeah they have money like whatever they pay my rent sure he can do what he wants how do you feel That's about that though because obviously you're a business how do you feel about what as in towards the men or towards the women because i think Both. Yeah, because I think obviously you're a successful businesswoman yourself, so it's it's different with you, right? I have no problem with a woman if a if a man has the money, or is doesn't have the money and is stupid enough to, you know, say go eat whatever you want and blah blah blah. Like if you're a, a woman and you want something to do on a weekend, I ain't got a problem with you going out and doing that. But yeah, when it's sort of like, then you're taking loads of pictures saying like. And then they start pretending that's like their lifestyle when it's it's been sort of backhanded. It's been funded backstage, if that makes sense. You yeah. Know? Um, I wouldn't do that all the time. Go get the free dinners mm. and stuff when I was in a relationship. But now I'm definitely going to start doing that more. Like <laughs> I never did that. Yeah. I would just go with my boyfriend. But um, I don't think it's good when the whole... I don't think the girls should be doing that. And I don't think the guys should be doing that. That's just my opinion. I think it's, I'm, I'm monogamous. Mm. I'm not into that, that stuff. Oh, yeah. I think when we spoke on the phone, you seem like, um, obviously you're a relationship girl. Um, but do you think obviously hearing your stories from like your lash business, do you, is it sort of like transactional in the sense of like, yeah, go have your nice meal, but you're coming upstairs, <laughs> uh, later this evening yeah it's definitely like mm. they are that's so creepy man I think so weird. yeah honestly I not and i've have multiple lash clients that have been trying to date doing everything that they can beautiful girls and they haven't had a boyfriend and i've been here for like a while and i've been watching mm. it all go down it's hard to find do someone here do you think they don't have a boyfriend because they're i don't blame them if, if a guy's saying come out with me to a five star or like go eat in a five star hotel, have your drinks, get anything you want, and the guy's all right looking. I don't blame them for like being attracted to that offer, but obviously that's not going to be a long term thing. He's going to do that to every girl as long as he wants to. Yeah. So do you think they sort of bring it? The girls bring it on themselves. Who's more to blame? Do you think it's a fifty fifty thing? I'm not trying to trap you with this question, but. I don't think it's the girls. They just want to find someone. 
They do. But, it's the men here. But do you not think the girls are sort of... They know they should be looking for a different type of man after they've had that experience. Like you say, they've tried everything, but why don't they date a nice man who's not offering to pay for everything? Like there must be people yeah, in Miami who have money. Looking, who... I think they're looking for someone with money. So yeah, they're putting themselves in that situation. There must be some men in Miami who have money who aren't, you know, abusing it, so to speak. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't heard of them. Where are they? Where are they? Okay. I'm single. <laughs> Okay, so in terms of Miami, dating scene, not great for set, settling down, but like when you walk around Miami, so I've had it in a few places. When I lived in Bondi Beach, the people were fucking beautiful. Men and women, like the men were jacked. They were all, they were all injecting steroids. So I literally had to get in the best shape of my life. I had to get a six pack and that was great. I had to level up when I was in Australia where, and the women were obviously drop dead gorgeous. Is it the same in Miami? Is it just, you step yeah. outside and just like, fuck me, like 10 out of 10. It's like, I I can't go out in sweats because I look like shit. Me and my friends were just talking about this because one of my other friends just became single as well. So we're like doing it together. These girls are Solidarity, top yeah. not <laughs> insane. They're beautiful. There's models mm. out here. Like it's, it's hard. It's a rough life to compare. Yeah. And what about the men? What are the men saying? The men are okay. <laughs> Why am I getting I mean, the you're okay, you just come out of a relationship, so you're definitely in that I stage men, of yeah. I hate yeah, you're definitely in that stage yeah. of fuck men, they're trash, blah blah blah, women are the gospel. Um My standards okay. are so high. You don't Well, get we'll it. get to that because you have a certain notes which is just crazy <laughs> to me. But we'll get to that. Okay, so. so talking about your ex briefly, you moved out to Miami with your ex, right? Yes, from San Diego. Okay, so you guys met in San Diego. Um, what was the story there? So you guys moved out to Miami for, for his business for because COVID yeah, and you so wanted, like the taxation was less? What was, this, what was it about? Yeah, we, we moved because COVID. Everything was closed in San Diego. Miami was all open. Everyone was like partying over here. And then, you know, we were both business owners. So we decided better for tax purposes to move over here. Mm. We had a big group of friends who also did it with us. So we kind of moved together. So that's kind of dope. Like a group of you just moving down. It was fun. And then did his sort of, <laughs> did his sort of business sort of, what does he do? He's crypto, right? Uh, he has a crypto hedge fund. He day trades and then like real estate. Um, he and created social... trading algorithms, so it took off. Definitely okay. when he moved here. And his social media presence blew up as well. He's got like a million something followers, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Gun crazy. <laughs> yeah, but he, That's crazy. he just speaks facts, wisdom, smart guy. The stuff that he mm. posts is all real intelligent stuff. Okay, so in terms of like, but it definitely took off in Miami. Do you think that was because it was just sort of the network he had access to? Or do you think it was just he just blew up and he just happened to be in Miami? Mm, I think it might be a little bit of both. I mean, he definitely worked really hard, grinded. Yes. But I think definitely the network being around here, surrounded by these people. And yeah, definitely people he met and stuff. He, he, yeah. His business took off when he moved here. That's what I'm trying to get at is like if you move to a New York or Dubai, like that's why I look at Dubai sometimes. I just think the network of people who are doing stuff online, successful, like it's massive, right? Um, yeah. Do you think that is like a proper, that can make a difference? Like having access 100%. to those people who have already been there and done it. Yep. You, you can ask them anything. You guys can like work together and on stuff. Yeah. I definitely think it's where you are. And I think obviously I want to be sensitive to like obviously you just come out of a relationship, but like in terms of like the lifestyle you guys, you guys were together for a while, right? Five years. Okay. It's far longer than any relationship I've had. But in terms of like the lifestyle you lived, what was that like? Trips, luxury lifestyle, yachts, nice cars. Go deeper. Go deeper. What Best what was like a Go deeper. Paint a, paint me a picture. What was like sort of where are you going on holiday? Where we'd what? Where we where are you going on holiday? On a holiday for my birthday. Oh. He flew me for my last birthday. We went on a a private PJ to go hang out with some animals. That was a fun one. For holidays, usually we go to like with family though. Okay. But in terms when you say PJ private jet. <laughs> 
for our listeners who don't know what PJ stands for, I didn't know what it stood for. So yeah, that's a private jet. You know, me and Kaylin were taking them all the time. Um, okay, that's that's crazy because obviously you're <laughs> you're a successful business owner yourself. But like, there's business class, first class, and then there's private jet money. Yeah. Obviously, you guys were living the life. He's obviously very financially sound um, yeah no more no more pjs for me now i'll be doing business class <laughs> which is fine love, i'm okay with that i'm not yeah. some bougie girl no, but that, was nice. that that is hilarious like and in terms of just how hard was he working how hard were you working did you guys actually get to enjoy the fruits of your labor or was it literally grinding non-stop grind time Grind time for mm. sure. Definitely um, working. Like when I moved here, I had to build my whole business all over again. Like I had my clientele in California. I left to move mm. here. I had to build it all over again, like running ads, meeting girls at networking events, joining groups on Facebook, just to, like meet women. I would tell I like influencers, I'll do, I'll do your lashes for free. Like just promote me. So that's how I grew mine. Him, he's definitely oh. solid, like staring at charts all day working all day like he does not he's very mm. disciplined yeah does he i like that party? hustle from you though doesn't yeah. party what was sort of like the highlights in terms of uh, i don't want to bring up like memories in terms of obviously your memory your best memory could be just on a couch like just looking at someone enjoying their presence but like what was like the best memory in terms of like wow i can't believe we experienced the northern lights together or you know mm, there's so many with him you, you gotta understand five years i think it's mm. just like definitely like the trips we've been on together like because it's yeah, just I think like that's, that that's what i'm trying to get at i think just in terms of like a really amazing memory for like someone who wasn't on private jets and stuff might be like a nice holiday to croatia or something but you might have like uh we were at you know, on a safari out back. Okay. You know, My number star. one was when we were taking a helicopter through the Swiss Alps in Switzerland. It was snowing. It was the most incredible views I've ever seen in my entire life. Breathtaking. Like we were right next to the snowy mountains. Like it was just incredible. That's dope. I can't even describe it to you. Yeah. That's dope. So where, where, then, where, so you've been to Switzerland, where else? Um, Santorini, Dubai. Those are probably like the top coolest places. Been around here, like the Bahamas, um, Mexico a majillion times. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Cancun. I know that's incredibly basic, but I've been to Cancun. I'm sick of going to Mexico. I want to check out some <laughs> new stuff. <laughs> But what about, um, have you been to, you've been to Europe then? So have you been to London? Have you been to Germany? No, Was... I've never even been to Paris. That's one I'm surprised. Five years and he ain't taking you to Paris and he's up, his, he needed to up his game. We were supposed to go once and then we were like, nah. Because we were in Costa Rica and it was just like too close, so we didn't go. Oh, you definitely chose correctly. Costa Rica is way better, especially if you can surf. So much cooler. Rock climbing down a waterfall in costa rica that was pretty epic okay absolutely very nice so you, you don't mind getting down and dirty so to say yeah i'm a like girl that not, can do both that's what we like to hear you're not a girl who's just like right because i've been with these girls right where it's you go on a holiday with them and they're just like let's just sunbathe for like five days and i'm just like no that 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 like, i don't mind doing that for a little bit but that's so boring to me like let's go and experience the culture let's go and experience you know you if you're in switzerland if you let's go and do a hike let's go into the mountains you know what i mean let's not exactly yeah that's how i am a lot of the girls here in miami are like oh let me like lay on the yacht like that's how the girls are here do you know like, what it's because you're an east here. coast girl it's because you're an east coast girl boston's my favorite state mm -hmm. or my favorite city and it's very much because of tom brady and because i visited there twice but um yeah i just like the culture on the east coast more like my my parents lived in america in palo alto on the west coast for a bit and i grew up thinking oh yeah i want to live in santa monica i want to surf and I, wanna, and I was like actually it's a bit it's a bit airy fairy over the west coast like it's cool definitely cool but yeah. i think um i like there's a bit more grit on the east coast from what i've I experienced and i think i would prefer to date a woman from the east coast but that might be a bit ridiculous to say because i can't throw everyone on the west coast into that bucket i think yeah i could tell i think east coast women definitely have a little bit more of grit about them if that makes sense i'm definitely gonna get hate for saying that but i'm english so i don't really fucking care <laughs> <laughs> um well, but okay so 
Yeah, well, there you go. You strike me as someone like obviously you're into health and fitness. How often do you gym? Are you Pilates girl? Are you weightlifter? Pilates, yoga, weightlifting though, for sure. I work with a trainer. Mm. Best decision I ever made. She holds me accountable. She pushes Female me. Female trainer. That was my next question because I know so many. All right, I'm not in my best shape right now, but when I was in Australia, I thought about becoming a PT that there wasn't enough money in it for me, unless you like have a really great clientele. In terms of like being a PT, I was like, I see so many PTs who end up dating their clients. And I'm just like, if I was a woman who was serious about getting in shape, being my best self, I would have a female trainer. I also did it like out of respect of my ex-boyfriend. I don't think yeah. it's right to like work out a man. I don't blame people. I think it's like, you know, like these dance competitions, like you're spending a lot of time with someone in like a close confined space. Someone who works out is probably going to be attractive. It's mm -hmm. it's not, yeah, it's not ideal. Um, but yeah, the amount of PTs I know who end up dating like one of their clients, I think it's just it's kind of alarming. Going back to your relationship, what is what are you gonna miss the most besides as brutally as this sounds, the person? Like obviously, is it the private jets? Like that must have been nice to skip no, all the bullshit. No, I would have before he had all that. I would just miss. I would That's just important miss to know. Him. Say that again. Say that again. I was with him before he grew his business and i watched him grow and it was awesome and pr super proud mm. of him but i will just miss having the comfort of just having your best friend with you at all times mm. eating dinner together and just having someone that you can trust yeah. fully and honestly dating freaks me out i don't want to get to know someone else again right now it sounds terrible honestly just, i thought he was the one so i'm just like yeah in a weird spot no that sucks i think um especially i don't think you've seen it yet i told you to watch it you probably haven't but baby reindeer that is scaring me in terms of online dating like i just don't think anything's safe right now <clears throat> because that's the one with the stalker and they met oh on... yeah i need to watch it <laughs> yeah you need to watch it it's blown up in the uk um okay but apparently apparently the guy who created it richard gad um my friend who i spoke to today her friend worked with him and apparently he's actually a bit of a dickhead but anyways it's blown up and scared me in terms of dating online i'm like oh my god anyone can be a fucking crazy psycho um so yeah, i'm a I little decided, bit cool i decided to create a hinge but then i just deleted it hinge if i'm gonna be like I'll be honest, I'm probably a dating app expert. <laughs> I don't know, that's definitely not something to be proud of, but Hinge is the best one you can be on. Um, just because there's less people to like. You like run out after eight likes, so you, you spend literally two minutes and then you're done. And they tend to be better quality. I feel like Hinge puts, puts people on your sort of level, whereas Bumble, Tinder, it's just a crap bucket of ugly and attractive. It, it doesn't make any sense. The algorithm doesn't make sense. Yeah. So guys, how are we doing? If you are enjoying this, podcast slash long video form content and i do have some other guests potentially lined up and yeah just let me know what you guys think of it if you're enjoying it if you want to see more content like this you know it was a lot of fun to film so i'm more than happy to bring out more content like this but yeah let me know down below in the comments uh if you want to see more content like this with more guests and yeah we'll dive deep into everything dating sex and my wacky opinions on it after they've talked so yeah let's get back to the podcast peace okay so going back to your ex in terms of like you guys were together for five years obviously it's recent that you broke up right about a month and a half ago oh my god okay that's brutal most people would be not functioning so fair fair play to you but um why was the reason you sort of broke up um, he says that I wasn't really growing my business as much as I should be, um, like that I had a few things to work on in myself to grow. Um, and then he decided that we wanted different timelines. Like I'm 29 years old. I'm hoping that my partner wants to get married at least when I'm 31, 32. Mm. Uh, I want to be a mom. He was unsure of those things. He, uh, decided he never wants to really get married. He finally came to his decision and he knows that that's something that i really want in life and so yeah that was... and you guys are the same age he's about to be 31 in june okay so he's a couple years older i'm 29 yeah so in terms of the business comment where does that come from what what does it matter in terms of like your business why the fuck does that matter <laughs> like obviously it's doing well 
for me, I don't know. I guess I, he says I need to be more resourceful on things. He just wants me to grow more. I think, yeah, it's, I, think... I, I, think it, I think it's a projection. I think it's just like a an excuse on a way out. Yeah. Which is okay. He just doesn't want what I want in the long term. Yeah, I think, I think that's the sec- where we're just budding. I honestly think that that's just an excuse because anybody else tells me you're crushing it. It's not yeah. you. Yeah. And without being brutal, like let's be honest, like the scale for growth between the two, like obviously his can scale far greater, right? Compared to yours. Yeah, I mean, so, like- so it's not fair to say that. And if you're already crushing it, you can take yours as far as you can. But it like, there's more avenues he can go that with his in terms of trading and stuff. Yeah, like I don't really want to be a massive CEO. That's not what I want for myself. I'm comfortable with where mm. I'm at, and that's something that he didn't like. Yeah, I think in terms of like. You guys were like so, like a power couple. Like, I love that you like you're successful on your own. Like that's that's amazing. That's an incredibly attract. A lot of men find that intimidating, but I think that's an incredibly attractive trait in a woman. You know, being independent, being successful, um, and I think in terms of yeah, from the sounds of it, from our conversation on the phone, from you saying that just now, I think it probably is the latter. He's you know, he says he doesn't know if he ever wants to get married and have kids. And, and I don't know the guy, so I'm not going to slag him off or anything. But um, people change. I think I, I literally just turned 26 this week. And I thought 30 was going to be the age I had kids and was married. And now I'm thinking 32 is marriage, 35 is kids. Because I got a lot of shit I want to do before I have kids. Like kids are a... Uh... All you guys are saying 35 now. Damn near 40 is when you guys want it. It's like we have timelines. We're women. I get that. But but I've got money and places to... I ain't, I ain't flying private jets. He could do it and have a nanny. Like I'm not saying that's what he should do. But you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah, no. Obviously, if I had money I like that, private jet money, I'd be like, okay we can have a kid and I can still do the stuff that I want to do because, you know, money isn't a problem. That's what I'm saying. Money was not a problem for him. Yeah. I think it's just, he's not ready, but I am, I'm ready for the next chapter in my life. I was like ready all in. Do you, I know you've said so many positive things about him in, relation to like his success and him as a person and we'll get to like your notes of like what a man has um and i know you you, you sort of have like a check list of what a man should have right <laughs> yeah we'll get I into do. that it's but different. you do have one and he ticked most of it right or if not all of it yeah, yeah. all of it so oh, that sucks do you, do you not hold a little bit of i'd be pissed because i'd be like you either know if you know if you're gonna have kids with someone and get married and that doesn't just you don't get asked that and then last minute you go actually no i don't want that oh I'm he must have known for he must have known for a little bit i'm mad you're handling it well i can tell there's a bit of madness but you've been very mature about it a lot of women be like steady gentlemen I, to be honest, I'd be like, fuck this, like, you know, you know, you probably knew three years in or whatever, like, uh, to be brutally honest, like, um, yeah, I'd be pissed off, but is what it is, you're handling it very maturely. Okay, so in terms of next steps, anything else you want to say about your ex? I just wish him well, and I hope he finds <laughs> what he's looking for, because... You are... Me. A classy lady. I was hoping you'd bite on that and call him a wanker or something, but fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, no, you're very. That's a very mature way to look at it. Okay, so in terms of next steps, you've you've sort of alluded to it. In the next two or three years, what do you want? How do you see your life? Where are you live in? Do you have children? Are you married? Next three years. My thing is, I gotta find someone now. I gotta date someone and make sure they're not a freaking psychopath. Mm. That stuff takes time. So now I, I have to go force myself to date because I'm 29. Like yeah, I know everyone's scared. like, oh, you're young, you're young. For me, no, I wanna be a young mother. I don't wanna be an old mm. mom. 
it's scary when you've been in a relationship for a while and then you come out of that relationship and what the fuck do I have to off like what do I have from that relationship I have memories memories are dope but I don't have anything solid in front of me I don't have a child I don't have you know so that must be that must fucking suck and i'm not trying to make you feel shit <laughs> it sounds like i am but i'm just trying to think out loud but in terms of like do you think miami is the place to fucking find someone because it doesn't sound like no, it is i don't think okay. so i don't think i'm gonna find it here have you been on any dates since you broke up <laughs> yeah i went on one date um great guy he's older so he's 36. okay well off um Owns a house in Venetian, took me on a bougie, nice dinner date, and then rent got us a table at a this hotel called Faina to watch the live band. I love it. Like, was it like jazz? Yeah, it was like a live jazz I love, band. Yeah, hey, sounds like a man after my own heart. I love that vibe. Live music, yeah, the best. Like, jazz, especially with jazz. An effort. Yeah. Yeah. So how did that go? It went well. What's what's happening with that day? Is it sort of? He's giving fuck boy. He's oh no! He's giving dating mm. multiple women, and I'm not here for that. So, sorry, buddy. Mm. Okay, question on Sucks. this one guy. Did he ask you back to his on that first date? Yes. <laughs> right as always. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. All men are the same. All men are the same. And I ain't got a problem. Like, obviously, he sees a beautiful woman. He wants to try that. But yeah, if they're asking you back on the first date. It normally means fuck boy. Then again, yeah. one of my girlfriends, you know, we went back to mine the first night and she ended up being my girlfriend. So it doesn't always mean it, but normally does mean. Yeah. Honestly, a lot of girls are like that. Like, I won't kiss on the first day. Like, honestly, if you're connecting with someone and it freaking happens, I'm about it too. But like, yeah, definitely not sleep on the first date. Don't sleep with the guy on the first yeah. date. I think so. I think the best, honestly, I think the best thing a girl can do, and this might sound counterintuitive, is get close and then just say, right, I gotta go. I think that that is like such a power play move. I think that drives me crazy. But the respect I have for the woman after that is like so high. I'm not saying that I'm some fucking guy that people can't resist. I'm not saying that, not at all. But it's, you know what I mean? It's like something just like, shit this this is a woman this is not a girl she knows how she's like she's in control you just feel like like you're yeah i just respect that i've had that hap i've had that happen once or twice and it's just like those those whatever they ended up being they went further because the respect i gained for them was just like instantaneous i was like the self-control is attractive i was just gonna say because it's hard like not I'm not talking about me in general i'm talking if you have a vibe with someone in general it's really hard to walk away I'm not saying me yeah, in definitely. general before people jump down my throat. I mean, I am a fucking beautiful man, but let's be honest. Like, <laughs> it's very much... Yeah, so how long did you make... You were about to say something. How long did you make your ex wait? Uh, He waited a month. Is that long? Okay, that's fine. No, that's fine. I had... Honestly, I had... I actually think a month is, like, perfect. A month to six weeks at the absolute most. Because once you get to six weeks, I'm losing interest. Because then I start to think you're, like, some nun. Um, gotcha. I had a guest come on and she said she makes men wait six months. Oh, come on. And I was like, and <laughs> yeah. do you know what the crazy, do you know what the crazy thing is about her? She's so what? sexually liberated. It's ridiculous. Guess where, she, guess the craziest place she's had sex. Where? A confession box in a church. What? What a weirdo. At, no. <laughs> I actually went on a date with that girl, but she's such a sweet yeah. girl, but she, that was before I knew that. So it is, it's so weird because it's like, she did that with her partner at the time, but it's like for someone to be so like, all, and some of the other stuff she's done is like crazy to most people, but she makes the people six she likes months. wait six months, which I find like, yeah, just if, absolutely I, if I see he's like a good guy, like he's going to wait, he checks my yeah. shit, he is going to He's going to work for it. <laughs> but then sometimes girls are just like, yeah, he's a bit of a fuck boy, but I'm just, I'm in that mood. So let's just have fun. Uh, yeah, not all no, the time, definitely. That's but... a whole different scenario. If it's not someone mm. that I see myself long term with, then maybe I would. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. But um, it is funny. It feels like the nice guys always end up, or not even like the good guys always end up suffering. <laughs> um, no. 
but okay so in terms of miami lifestyle people are in very good shape they obviously the guys would you say like i know you said the guys are right but like oh, just superficial level would you say i mean you came from san diego like the men over there and the women are good looking over there as well um so would you say miami like the men are like you must have noticed like when you've gone to maybe a different have, like have you been to fucking ohio or something and you have like oh yeah, oh, the caliber, God. Of, I mean, men, the caliber of men have dropped. Yeah, people always say this. Well, you're from San Diego, so you've just had the best of both worlds. So, but like, yeah, I've been to Ohio. I know what it's like in the places where it's crap. But the people here, are like, mm. definitely, you see businessmen walking around Brickell all the time, twenty four seven. Men in suits. It's a good area. Do you like the men in suit vibe? Obviously, your ex was kind of like that, but oh yeah, um, oh yeah. But do you think it's kind of douchey sometimes? <laughs> No, I'm into businessmen. No. That's my thing. Okay. I'm looking for a man in finance with trust fund. Six five, blue eyes. Finance, trust fund. Six five, blue eyes. I'm looking for a man. I'm looking for a man. Okay. What about the men in terms of like keeping themselves fit? And would I need a six pack to like compete over there? Is what I'm getting at. If no. you're going to Miami as no. a man, do you need to be like on your top game? Yeah. Yeah. Do you need to be like yeah. ripped or do you need to be? I mean, you just have to take care of your health. I don't think you need you just There's guys that are that don't have six packs. How rich are they? <laughs> there's some rich guys. That, <laughs> like the guy that I went on a date with, he's very successful, but he didn't have a six pack, but he wasn't like not healthy. OK, OK, uh, interesting interesting okay and what does your daily lifestyle in miami look like wake up drink my tea go to the gym come home make a protein smoothie check my finances start taking clients and that's it eat dinner what are you doing in the evening now that you're single you're going out with the girls you watching fucking oh, right netflix now, yeah. <laughs> right now going out with my friends a lot we're like going to dinners and actually I went out for F1 weekend. That was really fun. I hadn't gone out in a while. It was a good networking mm. um, weekend here in Miami. There were so many events going on. So we've been going out. That's what I mean. Like Miami is one of those places where there's always something going on. So there's just like, that's hard to say. For me, that'd be really hard to say no to. What was F1 weekend like? Any cool stories come from that? Like, what was the party in like? Um, yeah, there was a lot of events going on. There was a specific one called Carbone Beach Party with all mm. these like tables set up, um, a live band. I think Pitbull played. Elon Musk was there. LeBron James, Michael Rubin, and I went like two nights in a row. It was really cool. Like just, yes. I mean, like everyone. Was Drinking. LeBron Biden. James, that's fucking dope. Elon Musk. That's pretty dope. Oh. Yeah, were well, you more? You brought you like businessmen. You're more interested in Elon Musk. <laughs> I am. Oh, Elon Musk is. Oh, oh. I don't know. I'm. I'm not one of those who loves him. Like, yeah, obviously he's incredibly smart, incredibly successful. I don't think he's attractive though. Um, I don't and think I he's think attractive. He, I think Ew. he names his kids stupid names. Oh, I feel sorry I for them. I don't think he's attractive. I just like his brain. It, yeah, his brain's dope. I also think it'd be <laughs> like very cancerous. Like that must be so annoying. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Like to have a brain that is just like, got to fix this, got to fix that. Anyway. My ex was like uh, that. Yeah, I just think that would be such a headache. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough for people like Elon and me being so smart. Um, but in terms of that, so we were actually meant to film last weekend, but that is why you were quote unquote ill, right? Yeah, I'm That's an like idiot. I saw, show face. I saw, I saw the stories and I was like, this girl is having a good time. I don't blame you. I, I would have been more honest about it, but I don't blame you. But I got to call you out on your shit. Um, <laughs> it's right. Now. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's pretty dope that LeBron was there. I'm sh He wasn't drinking, was he? No. No. Not that they lasted long in the playoffs anyway. Uh, I gotta say, that was a Celtics fan. Fuck the <laughs> Lakers. Uh, uh, but anyway, so in terms of going back to fresh and fit, and I know this first section has been kind of scattergun, and I apologize for that, but I'm sort of just going off the tip of my head, to be honest, because... I wanted a bit more of a flowing conversation. But in terms of um, Fresh and Fit, they're based in Miami. Do you feel like they... Do you feel like... 
do they have a big presence in Miami? Because obviously they've got a bit of a cult following in terms of like, I don't agree with a lot of what Myron says. I agree with what he says in terms of like men need to get their shit together and they need to, you know, become their best versions. But he says a lot of misogynistic stuff and he sort of says, you know, women should be housewives and blah, blah, blah. I don't agree with that. So, so I'm yeah, not really familiar with it. I don't, I don't watch their podcast. All I know is they DM women all the time to go on. And I know that like, it's not the type of podcast I want to put myself on. They've DM'd you, right? Oh, yeah. All the time still. I think last week. Really? Still yeah, asking you to come they on? they always make girls. Mm-hmm. Girls to get on. See, the problem with you is you have too, like, too much self-respect and a brain, whereas... What about you? Have you ever been at a job where a guy made more money than you for the same exact position? I'm sure I have. Okay, but you don't have like, verifiable... Like, working at Chick-fil-A, I'm sure, like, my Plush. manager probably got paid more than me. But that's well, a manager. That's not, that's that's not the same position. Yeah. yeah. I don't watch their shit too often because Myron started pissing me off with some of the stuff he was saying. But it does sound like they go after OnlyFans people a lot. Yeah, they do. And they've given themselves kind of like a bad name now. I don't like a lot of people are sort of turning off against them. Yeah, you can only sort of be yeah. you can only sort of be that out there for as for a while until people start to say, okay, it's gone too far. Um, yeah. I mean, I just, yeah, it's weird. I think um, I've had an OnlyFans girl on my podcast. She's she's like the nicest woman, though. And I have no problem with someone being on OnlyFans. You want to get that bag, do what you want to do. But it just seems like the type of women they always have on are like... <sighs> not the brightest, to be brutally honest. And it just seems like an easy layup for Myron just to take the Brushy. piss out of. Yeah, trashy, and it just seems like someone who Myron can just shout at and make himself look like he's a genius when really he's just arguing the loudest in the room. And he's yeah. arguing against women who don't have brain cells, um, <laughs> to be brutally honest. But mm -hmm. I find that interesting. So who reaches out to you from Fresh and Fit? Is it like their PA? Is it Myron? Is it the, the, the larger it, guy? <laughs> it's some person. It's like... I think they have people, random people, because it's different people sometimes. Okay. Have they reached up to like? Have they reached out to like some of your f girlfriends as well, like any mm -hmm. of your other girlfriends? Yeah. Okay. I have some friends that have been on it. I have friends that have the same opinion as me. Oh really? When I have one of my friends from San Diego say they reached out to her, she was gonna fly out to come on it. I'm like, no, don't do that. So they're hitting up girls over there too. I don't. I don't blame them hitting up people trying to get them on their podcast. I do the same. And obviously they're yeah. far more successful than me. Fair play to them on that regard. I don't agree with everything they say, but into, and I agree mm -hmm. with what Myron says about men need to get level up and get the best out of themselves. I agree with that. But I think in terms of, so your friend who went on it, what was her experience? Um, she liked it. <laughs> She's very like outgoing. So she can She's very outgoing, lies. doesn't give a shit what people think. I like those yeah. people. They're my favorite type of people. I don't care what people think, so I ain't got a problem That's with that. That's how she is. And she ended up actually going on a few dates with Myron. Excuse me? No way. Now that's what? juicy because I think he's got a big nose and ugly, but fair play. Um, mm -hmm. What are the thoughts and on that? Got, he told her he has multiple girls. There's like a main one. There's like a... That's one of his big things that he says, yeah she'd be like number two or whatever at the time <laughs> I'm like, that's oh, no. fucking jokes what'd she say they went on a few dates but then she was like this is not for me and did it she liked him she thought he was cool she liked his main girl too she said she felt bad for her she thought she was a good girl she met the main girl yeah she met the main girl that's kind of crazy is the main girl just like so chill at his house like she's basically wifey yeah, the main girl is wifey. That's so fucking odd. <laughs> so she thought. So she thought he was like just a. Because obviously, you see someone on their podcast or on YouTube, and you're like, okay, Myron's loud and brash, and what 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 did she say he was like on like a date? Was he the same or was he more reserved? She liked him. She didn't say that he was crazy or anything she said that he was really sweet and took care of the bill took her out to dinner dates stuff like that yeah i'm not trying to hate on myron like again i i think i respect yeah. their podcast what it's achieved but as i said like i only bring fresh and fit up because i know you've been asked 
to go on it and because they're in Miami. Yeah. If it was Andrew mm -hmm. Tate, I'd talk about that as well. But I also know like someone who I actually follow who's kind of friends with them, but I think he's a bit more, you know, he's a bit more level headed is Justin Waller. He's like, he blew up with like construction business and he's very much on like male empowerment. I think we got too many soft men in this generation, to be honest. I don't know how you feel about that. I'd actually like to hear your thoughts on that. Do you think men this generation are sort of soft? Soft? Yes. Yeah. I think all these men are in their soft eras. They don't want to settle down. They're scared. And y'all need to wake up. All of you I don't, are hearing this. I don't think the men not wanting to settle down makes them soft. I think men are just soft in general. What do you mean? <laughs> There's the opinions we want. Like, why are you scared? And it's not, I'm not talking about my ex. I'm, I'm talking about yeah. all my clients that did the same thing but and telling me all think, these things. Do you not think that men, this generation of men, have lived in a world of women leading those men? And that's made them mm -hmm. soft. Because that's what I think. That's why people like Andrew Tate, that's why people like Myron, who's not as extreme as Andrew, but like Myron, you know, whatever, that's why they get so popular because men don't have male heroes anymore. Back in the 40s, 1940s, 1920s, we had Winston Churchill in the UK leading us to war. We had 16-year-olds, 20-year-olds signing up to join the army. If there was a world war today, and I'm not saying this like I'm some brave hero, if there was a world war today, the men would run and hide behind their mums. That's the generation we live in as men. Like The men are so God. weak. We're so soft. And it's low key pathetic. I'm embarrassed mm -hmm. sometimes. I'm like, shit, I need to take some pain in my life because it's like, it's not good enough. And that's why men like Andrew Tate and Myron, they do well because they have, in fairness to them, they tell you how it is and they say, you need to fucking stand up and be a man. And I respect that part of it. Um, but I also think we've become so soft because everyone gets a fucking trophy these days. You know, let's all celebrate that we all, you know, we all ran the race and we all get a trophy. Now, fuck that. You either win or you lose. That's how it is. That's how it should be. It shouldn't be a com uh, I took part trophy. I think we've all come, like, I honestly hate the modern generation quite a lot because I think we become so overly sensitive. That if someone says one bad thing, they get cancelled. One bad comment doesn't make you a bad person. It means you just slipped up. If you repeat that mistake, then you're a bad person. Then you're a shit person. Then you're whatever, you know. But if you say one bad thing, I don't think you should be cast out as... You know, it's outrage culture. People just want to be upset about something. Because it makes them feel better about their pathetic lives. That's my opinion. That's my mini rant over... Yeah, I don't like this generation. I agree with you on those topics. And going back to the like previous generations, I wish I dated in the 60s, the 70s, where I could go into a jazz bar. I always say this, this story. I could go into a jazz bar, I could see a pretty girl, and I could go walk up to her and say hi to her. Yes, I can do that these days in a nightclub, but are people in a nightclub on their best form? No dating apps it's just become who looks good on a the picture they could be an absolute horrible human being i've experienced that some of the most attractive girls i've gone on dates with are some of the worst people i've ever met in my life um and i just miss that sort of old i miss that old school romance where it's sort of like i see a pretty girl i go speak to her we hit it off and that's the start of our so-called love story adventure as cringes that sounds um modern dating is absolute trash and that's what partly why i do this podcast but i think also we're so superficial as a generation so superficial yep. and it's not even the hot people anymore like if i'm being brutally honest you got four out of tens acting like they're the shit because it used to be you're the prettiest girl in the 
all right, in England, you're the prettiest girl in the village. In America, prettiest girl in the city or the town. Now it's a bit like probably how you are. You probably got men hitting you up all over the world. And it's just I a do. bit like, it, and then, but you get girls who aren't very attractive, like who are getting hit up all over the world and it gets to their head and then they start thinking they're better than these men who deserve a chance. So yeah. I would defend that. It has gone yeah. a bit crazy. Um, so that's my rant over. I've had a little bit to drink, so that is probably why that came out. But I think it's important to remind people. Let's get on to those notes and let's let you do some talking. Perfect um, guy. So after, after my breakup, I decided I was going to not settle and actually find my husband. Because you got them in front of us? Just quickly flash the... My oh, dream that man. Like that looks extensive. All right, guys, if you made it to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you so much. It means generally a lot to me that you made it this far. You're a real one. And yeah, guys, I had a lot of fun filming this. If you did enjoy it, then please let me know down below in the comments if you want to see more videos with more, you know, Instagram models or, you know, just girls, pretty girls, just sort of talking about their dating experience. And we'll dive deep into all the weird and wacky parts of dating, you know, what's going on in dating apps, the weirdest messages they received, all that good stuff. And yeah, we'll get my weird takes on it as well yeah if you enjoyed it please let me know down below and we will bring more of these sort of videos to you but yeah just want to say thank you again so much for watching and if you could like and subscribe that would mean an awful lot so yeah have a good day guys go have a pint a drink you deserve it after listening to my fucking voice for about an hour and a half so yeah thank you guys